as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs, number 24. Gospel hymns and songs, number 24. When peace, like a river, attended my way, when sorrows like sea bureaus roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, if trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless assets and has shed his own blood for my soul. My sin owe the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. For me, be it Christ, be it Christ, hence to live. If Jordan above me shall rule, no pang shall be mine, for in death or in life. Thou wilt whisper thy peace to my soul. But Lord, it is for thee, for thy coming we wait. The sky, not the grave, is our goal. O trump of the angel, O voice of the Lord, blessed hope, blessed rest of my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul.
hymns and songs. Number 240. Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 16. Acts 16. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed. But his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not, and they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. 
And now do they thrust us out privily? Nay, verily. But let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them, and departed. Acts 17 Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live, and move, and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, or silver, or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, 
because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer before the study. Father, we thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your word that ever remains fresh. And thank you for the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow tonight. All contrary powers will be cast out in Jesus' name. Blessing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Authority for everyone. And whatever we will bind here on earth is bound in heaven in Jesus' name. Set everyone free. Confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight. And I pray that God will give us an open heart, open eyes, open mind to receive everything is revealing to us in Jesus' name. Today we're looking at Mark chapter 5 and we'll be studying from verse 1 all through to verse 20. Let me start with verse 1. And they came over onto the other side of the sea. Stop there for a moment. They came over to the other side of the sea. Let me bring you back to Mark chapter 4. Verse 35, and the same day when the evening, evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. You leave that, connect that with chapter 5 verse 1. And he came over unto the other side of the sea. The Lord had given the word. He declared the word, and whatever word he declared was a decree, and it's still the same today. Jesus, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. And whatever he declares in your life becomes a decree. And as he gave that declaration, and he gave that decree, the storm arose in between the declaration and the destination. There was a storm, but the storm could not stop the declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, in my life, in the church, in your family. Between the declaration and the destination, no storm will cancel that word of the Lord in your life. It was impossible. And it is still impossible today that Satan will raise up any storm, any crisis, any problem that can totally annul, destroy, or cancel the declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ as they came over to the other side what happened in chapter 5 one there was a demonic problem waiting two there was disease to be cured and three there was death to be cancelled and because of that threefold problem demon disease and death that he was to solve the problem. That's why the storm came. But well, thank God, your storm is over. As he came to the other side, now there's going to be demonstration, demonstration of power against demons, against disease, and against death. Tonight, we're looking at that first part, Christ's power and authority over all demons that's the subject tonight christ's power 
and authority over all demons. In this chapter 5, verses 1 through to 20, we're looking at three things. Number one, the authority of Christ over all demons. The authority of Christ over all demons. Number two, the antagonism against Christ after the deliverance. He delivered the man. The evil spirits went into the swine and they rushed and perished in the ocean in the sea. And because of that, all those people that saw it, they said, don't stay with us. Go away from us. We don't want you. Antagonism against Christ after the deliverance. Point number three, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. The man who was delivered, the man who was set free, wanted to follow Jesus in the way. And the Lord said, go back home and tell your friends in all the Capolis. Tell your friends everywhere, the people who have rejected me, and the people who will not have me because they love their swine more than their salvation. Go tell them the good thing, the great thing, and the gracious thing the Lord has done unto you. He became an ambassador, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Catholics. Come back to point number one. The authority of Christ over all demons. We're reading from verse one. Look at verse one. It says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the gatherings and when he was come out of the sheep immediately they met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who arch is dwelling among the tombs and no man could bite him no not what chains because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plugged asunder by him and the fetters broke him in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself was stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure you, I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he had said, for Christ had said, for Jesus had said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them out of the country. Now there was there nice unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils, all the demons, all the evil spirits besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. And they were choked in the sea. Christ has authority. Christ has power. And that power remains today. 
that when he said go just one word all those demons thousands of them legion and then they went into those two thousand swine pigs and they perished as we look at this i see number one the activity and the characteristics of demons as you look at mark chapter 5 you have this man in verse 2 it says he was in the tomb he will not stay in the house the devil drove him to a place of darkness a place of departed spirits and it says in the latter part of verse 2 he had an unclean spirit in verse 3 it says he was dwelling among the tombs he was separated from society he will not fit in society because the demons have made him not to be compatible with society are there people like that they cannot stay quietly in the midst of other people either they are shouting or they're screaming or they're crying or they're enjoying themselves because they cannot live at peace in the community of people not only that he had a kind of extra human power they bound him with fetters and they bound him with chains and it was like uh, nothing could bind him he broke the chains in pieces now you understand there are people like that they have this problem that you try to help and you try to bind and you try to make them keep quiet they cannot an evil spirit a demon has taken over their lives in the latter part of verse 4 it says and neither could any man tame him have you noticed people that they're beyond themselves and they want to control themselves they cannot other people want to trim them, tame them they cannot other people want to bring them quiet they cannot because another power is working in their lives and they are the people that will say you know i'd like to be quiet but i couldn't I like to stay calm but i couldn't because nothing and nobody could tame them and always night and day in verse 5 he was in the mountains he was jobless he had thrown away profession he had taken he had a kind of a taking to the mountains and he was uh, like that crying and coaching himself he was feeling the pain that's why he was crying and yet all the crying and all the pain could not stop him he was still hurting himself and cutting himself with stones and when he saw jesus he ran to worship him but then the next verse says he cried out and says what am i to do with you jesus thou son of the most high have you seen uh, you know those two have double personalities on the one hand they are running to jesus as if they want something from jesus when they get to Jesus, then they're saying, what have I to do with you? Get away from me. It was not the man. It was the evil spirit. You know, sometimes you find people like that. They want to do good. And they come to church. And they come. They say they are coming to Christ. And they are even running. I must not miss anything in the service. And now they come to the service they turn to be another person and then they'll be crying out we don't want that we don't want bible we don't want the teaching of the word of god but you are the one running and you are coming and now that you have come you turn to be another man split personality and jesus said come out of him whatever personality is driving anyone distracting anyone it will come out tonight in jesus name mark chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 17 mark chapter 9 verse 17 the activity and the characteristics of demons and one of the multitude answered and said master i have brought unto thee my son which has a dumb spirit and wheresoever he taketh him, he cheereth him, and foameth, and gash and gnashes with his teeth. 
and pineth away. And I speak to the disciples that they should cast him out, and he could not. See this one? Uh, it wasn't like the other man were because the characteristics of demons vary from person to person. This one will foam in the mouth, and this one will gnash of the teeth and cut his uh, own uh, tongue with his teeth, and then he's pining away, he's dying away. And sometimes he'll fall into the water, and sometimes into the fire. And they answered him, saying, O faceless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit cheered him. And he began to tear himself, but people will not understand. It's the evil spirit. When you find people like that, tearing themselves, destroying themselves, cutting themselves, doing evil to themselves. It's not them, it's the evil spirit. And he fell to the ground and wallowed for me. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came upon him? And he said of a child, and often times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us, on him, on me, on the mother, on the family, and help us. Jesus says unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Tonight, all things are possible to everyone who believes in Jesus name Luke chapter 8 the activity and the characteristics of demons Luke chapter 8 verse 29 in verse 29 for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for often times it had caught him and he was kept bound in chains or chains and in fetters and he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the desert driven of the devil running when there was nobody chasing him he had seen an evil personality evil power and now he's running and running to the wilderness but jesus could solve the problem and Jesus will solve our problems and Jesus will solve my problem he will in Jesus name the authority of Christ over demons the authority of Christ over demons look at verse 8 and he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit come out of the man thou unclean spirit and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is legion for we are many there were thousands of them and those thousands of demons had different diverse characteristics and there are people, you see them today, there's a characteristic being manifested. Another day, another negative thing. I say, I cannot understand. It's not him, it's not her. It's because of the many diverse, different, dangerous demons operating in that life. Today you are free. And he besought him much that he will not send them away out of the country do you notice that language there look at verse 10 he singular that's the man talking that's the chief of those demons talking and then it says that he besought him besought christ much that he christ will not send tell me the next word them plural that is he 
the chief demon, the commanding demon, the controlling demon, the one that controls all the others, besought the Lord that he will not cast them now in their thousands out of the country. Now there was there near to the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils plural thousands of them besought him christ saying send us plural into the swine that we may enter into them how do you understand that they would have preferred to stay in the man the man is a better house better accommodation better habitation for them but if you're going to send us out our next priority will be so that we're not just in the air roaming about in the desert in the wilderness send us into the animals into the swine and forthwith jesus bid them give them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down as the evil spirits were driving the man. Now they, were, they drove the swine into the sea. About 2,000 of them, and they were choked and they perished. And they that fetched the swine fled. And they told each in the city and in the country. And they went out to sea what it was that was done and they come to jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and closed and in his right mind and they were afraid jesus has power and today he still has the power and his word always comes out with authority and power come to chapter 9 chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 22 chapter 9 verse 22 and of times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us can jesus do anything in your personal life can jesus do anything in your family can jesus do anything in that person you are concerned about can jesus do anything he can and he will and jesus said unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believes and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, I command thee, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him and the evil spirit cried and rent him so and came out of him and he was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead but jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose and when he was come into the house his disciples asked him privately why could not we cast him out but you will i said you will why could we not cast him out the ability to cast out demons we're coming to mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 reading from verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe. Any believer in the house today? Any believer at the study today? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, tell me. Have you gone to sleep? I said, tell me. 
Say it as if it will happen. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. They shall take up serpents. Amen. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Give me a good amen. amen. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. The ability to cast out devils for every believing brother, every believing sister, it will happen through you. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. It will happen. We're coming now to point number two. And we're reading from Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, we're reading from verse 12 all through to verse 17. Mark chapter 5, verse 12. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told each in the city, and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and urge the legion. Notice that possessed with the devil, singular, that he is the chief of them. But then they explained, urge the legion. Thousands living there tormenting him. They saw him now sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him. To depart out of their coasts. Point number two, the antagonism against Christ after the deliverance. Those who had seen and had witnessed the deliverance of the demoniac and the drowning of the swine, they ran back to the city with the news. And then they said, Why have you done that? How is it that all the swine were totally destroyed? Maybe you have that question in your mind. How is it that Christ helping a man allowed 2,000 pigs to be destroyed? You know why? The children of Israel, the Jews, were not supposed, they were forbidden to eat swine or pig. And if they could not eat swine, they should not be raising a swine to sell to the people. And so because they were forbidden to raise swine or to eat swine, 
That's why the Lord permitted that. And those illegitimate work they were doing perished with the deliverance of the man. Not only that, the soul of the man was worth more than all the peaks in the world. What shall he profit a man? If he shall gain, if he shall have all the peaks in the world and lose his own soul, the soul of one person was greater than all the peaks. That's why it happened. But the people did not understand. And because of their lack of understanding, and they add more value for the peaks than for the soul of the man. That's why they drove Jesus away. They were antagonistic. And they said, we don't want you in our community. Look at three things here. Number one. A clear liberation from evil spirits. A clear liberation. The man was liberated, was delivered, and it was very clear. Look at verse 15. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and closed and in his right mind and they were afraid it was a clear liberation and when God touches your life like he will do tonight it will be very clear everywhere you go when we're truly converted there will be clear demonstration of that conversion of that liberation Ephesians chapter 4 in Ephesians chapter 4, I read from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 20. In verse 20, but ye have not so learnt Christ, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. And what's the evidence that you are liberated and converted by him? That she put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That man was renewed. That man became restful. That man became peaceful. It was a clear evidence of his liberation. When you are renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's the evidence that you are totally liberated. The former things are passed away. A new life is now visible in your character. In First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, I read from verse 13. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13, Wherefore, gather up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves, according to your former lusts in your ignorance your former lusts that's gone your former behavior that's gone your former truancy violence that's gone your former disobedience that's gone a new life has come and it is that new life that shows a clear liberation from your past in verse 15, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Number two, a consuming love for their swine. Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 16. And they that saw it, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine 
And they began to pray him. And they began to tell him. And they began to push him away to depart out of their coasts. They loved the forbidden swine more than they loved the Savior. A consuming love for the forbidden. Look at Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Reading from verse 7 and verse 8. And the swine, though he divides the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he choose not the cord, he is unclean to you. The swine is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. For they are unclean unto you. I will find these Israelites, not only that an individual will not eat, they raised up a company, they raised up a profession, they raised up a work to do. And the work was to be producing that which the Almighty God had forbidden. And now they had such love, consuming love, so that's swine that even when the deliverance came to the man, they drove Jesus away because of that. Those people loved the pig more than their soul, more than the Savior, more than their salvation. Three, the costly love of their souls. Come to Mark chapter 5. Verse 17, Mark chapter 5, verse 17. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. They said, their souls could be lost. That's all right for them. Since their swine had been lost, they also could lose their soul. The costly loss of their souls. Mark chapter 8, reading from verse 36. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? If you could gain all the swine in the world, all the pigs in the world, all the poultry in the world, all the money in the world, all the material things in the world, and you lose your soul, what's your gain? But these people do not consider the loss of their soul. Look at verse 37. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There are people who love material things, modern salvation. They love earthly things more than their souls and they perish i pray you will not perish philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 i read from verse 18 philippians chapter 3 verse 18 for many walk of whom i have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. There are people who are not conscious, they have a soul, a soul to save, a heaven to get to, a hell to escape. And the apostles said, I think about them, I weep. I talk about them, I cry. And when I meditate on their destiny and what they're doing to themselves, it says, I am weeping continually. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. The glory in feeding the swine. The glory in doing a shameful thing. The mind as listings. I pray that will not happen to you. Mark chapter 5 
point number three now an ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. An ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. We're reading from verse 18. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him, pleaded with him that he might be with him. How be it? Jesus suffered him not, allowed him not, permitted him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee, and has had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in the Capolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel God will use you in our city God will use you everywhere you go the Lord will use you in Jesus name he became an ambassador an ambassador for Christ throughout the capolis that's what the capolis actually is a compound word it means 10 cities, 10 cities, a new convert, a new believer, somebody that was just delivered, newly liberated man in the Capolis, in all the 10 cities, he began to publish the word of God and he was a good, successful, effective ambassador, an ambassador for Christ through the Capolis. Three things here. Number one, the test of true conversion. The test of true conversion. Look at verse 18, chapter 5, verse 18. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him, pleaded with him that he might be with him. He wanted to be with Christ. He's not going to go back to the tombs. He's not going to go back to the mountains. He's not going to go back to those valleys. He's not going to go back to those dark places. He now wanted to be with Jesus, the light of the world. When you're truly converted, the test of genuine true conversion is that you want to be with the Lord. You want to stay with the Lord. You want to abide with the Lord. John chapter 6. John chapter 6 verse 68. The test of true conversion. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. To whom shall we go? We're going to stay with you. We're going to abide with you. You have the words of eternal life. We've heard much. We want to hear more. And we want to stay with you until you take us to that life everlasting that's the test of true conversion look at john chapter 8 verse 31 john chapter 8 verse 31 then said jesus to those jews would believed on him if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed that liberated man wanted to stay with jesus Hearing the word, analyzing the word, meditating on the word, believing the word, and having new experiences through the word. If ye continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. John chapter 15, reading from verses 4 and 5. John 15, verse 4. Abide in me. And I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. 
he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. The evidence that you have been converted, you're saved, is that you have a change of life. And you're sitting down, and you're calm, and you're peaceful. The wickedness of the past is gone. The violence of the past is gone. The hard drugs you used to take, cutting yourself, cutting yourself, committing slow suicide, gradual suicide. Everything is gone. You are now a new creature in Christ. Point number two now there, the task for true converts. If you are really born again, if you are truly saved, if you are a real child of God, that's a task for you. Look at verse 19, Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Mark chapter 5, verse 19. How be it Jesus suffered him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. The task for true converts. John chapter 4, reading from verse 28. John chapter 4, verse 28. And the woman let then left her water pot and went her way into the city and says to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. He brought many, she brought many people unto the Lord. That's our task. When you are born again, when you say you are a child of God, when you say you have been liberated, when you say you have been saved, the task of the true disciple, true convert, true child of God is that you go and tell the story of redemption. You go and tell and speak and proclaim and publicize the message of the gospel. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. You see what the liberated man did? Go and do thou likewise. You see what that woman at the well, what she did after her salvation, after she received Jesus, and she knew this is the Christ, this is the Messiah, this is my Savior, this is the giver of the living water. She went to the town to tell everybody to fulfill the task of the true convert. Luke chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Speak to them, compel them to come in. Preach to them, compel them to come in. Testify unto them. Tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and is willing to do for them. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. You will be a witness to the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, point number three, the triumph of true consecration. The triumph of true consecration. The people that receive some benefit from the Lord, and then they vanish away. You can't see them anymore. You can't even see them attending church service. You cannot see them witnessing. You cannot see them preaching about Christ who has set them free. But this man had the triumph of true consecration. We're reading from Mark chapter 5, verse 20. Mark 
chapter 5, verse 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis all those ten cities how great things the Lord had done for him. And all men did marvel. When he spoke, he didn't speak like a mad man and a same man, a demon possessed man. His life has now totally changed. His language changed. His appearance changed. He was now well dressed as a person touched and transformed by the Lord. And when he spoke about the Lord, he was believable. Look at Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 39. Luke chapter 8, the same story, but it tells you clearly what he did and the effect of what he did. Luke chapter 8, verse 39. Return to thine house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way, and he published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. He didn't say, I'm a new convert. I won't know what to tell them. I'm afraid of them. I feel shy. It's only the evil spirit that made me bold like an extrovert. But now that the evil spirit is gone, I am shy. I am frightened of people. I'm fearful. I wouldn't know what to tell them. He obeyed the Lord promptly. You will obey the Lord. And he went his way in obedience to what the Lord had said. And he published throughout the whole city. Started with that city out of the ten. How great things Jesus had done unto him. Look at the result. The triumph of true consecration. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. These were the people that had driven him away. These were the people that said, you destroyed our swine, our pigs, we don't want to listen to you. But now because the man became a true ambassador throughout the Capolis, they were waiting for him and they heard the word. The Lord will make you a true ambassador of Christ. You will speak the word. You will publicize the word. And many will come to receive the Lord as their personal savior in Jesus' name. Give me a rousing amen. amen. Acts chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 18. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed forth unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Like all these people who obeyed the Lord, we will obey the Lord. Acts chapter 11, reading from verse 21. Acts 11, verse 21. And the hand of the Lord was of them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. We're going and we're going to scatter throughout the Capolis, our cities and other cities and we're going to publish what Christ has done. Christ has delivered us. We're going to tell about it. 
Christ has liberated us and we're going to preach it. Christ has saved us and we're going to tell everybody everywhere in Jesus' name. If you are not delivered yet tonight, you are delivered in Jesus' name. If you are not liberated yet tonight, you are liberated in Jesus' name. If there's any power, any spirit still tormenting your life, tonight all the power of torment will be cancelled in Jesus' name. It may be one demon or two or two thousand or six thousand, deliverance has come. I said deliverance has come. The power of Christ still remains the same today. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And what he did for that man and what he did for people like him all over the centuries. Tonight is tonight. He'll do it for you. Salvation has come. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. Total liberation has come. And as the Lord delivers you, you will abide with the Lord. You will stay with the Lord. And then in your community, everywhere you go, you'll tell about Jesus the Savior, and Jesus the Healer, and Jesus the Deliverer. And your message will be believable in Jesus' name. And many, many, many people through you will turn unto the Lord. What are you? Are you going to do it? I said, are you going to do it? I said, are you going to do it? Rise up and tell the Lord, tonight is a night of blessing. It's a night of liberation. It's a night of deliverance. It's a night of salvation. And it's a night of total, total redemption. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. I'm here tonight. And I know you will touch my life. I know you will liberate me. Total liberation will come to you. If you ask him, you will do it. You see that's authority today. The authority of Christ over all demons. The authority of Christ over all diseases. The authority of Christ over all disaster. The authority of Christ over all difficulties. The authority of Christ over all challenges. The authority of Christ over every power that may torment your life. Open your mouth. That man opened his mouth and said, Lord, Lord, I want deliverance. Even though something was still, was also knocking and something was contradicting. I said, Christ, what have I to do with you? Depart from me. But it was the devil. That devil will come out. That evil power will come out. The power that makes you a double personality. You come and then you want to go. You arrive, you want to depart. You see Christ and you want to run away from him. And you want something good and then you want something evil at the same time. That evil thing that makes you a double personality. All that will live your life tonight. Tell him, tell him, tell him. He will. It'll set you free. Break the yoke in your life and destroy the evil sin in your life. Evil spirit will vanish away tonight. All those dangerous things in your life will vanish away tonight. All those things that want to destroy your life, destroy your future, destroy your eternity. And make you spend eternity with demons. All those things will vanish away tonight. Call upon him. He saves. Call upon him. He delivers. Call upon him. He forgives. Call upon him. He'll deliver you. From the top of your to the tip of your toe. Your head, your brain, your mind, your spirit, your soul, your personality. The Lord will deliver you tonight. Any sin in your life, repent. Not allow sin and Satan to run your life, to ruin your life, to destroy. Your chance of getting saved. 
He'll forgive if you will repent. Any power stopping you from living right, he'll cast it out. Any power disturbing you from living a righteous life, he'll put a stop to that tonight. Any power that makes sin so strong, evil spirit so strong, evil power so strong, bad behavior so strong, that you couldn't be delivered, tonight is your night. Take that problem, take that personality to the Lord in prayer. He will deliver you. A good life will come. A new life will come. A beautiful life will come. A new behavior will come. New activity in your life. You'll be calm. Violence will go away from your life. Wickedness will go away from your life. You will have power over every sin that has had dominion over your life. Christ is able. Call upon him. Mighty Savior. A mighty deliverer. A mighty redeemer. He'll set you free. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be set free. He'll set you free. Set you free. Set you free. From every evil, set you free. From every sin, set you free. From every chain, set you free. From all the fetters, set you free. From all those difficult challenges in your life that do not allow you to live right, it'll set you free. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people of God shout. And the expectant people of God shout. And the conquering people of God shout. You are taking victory back home. Liberation back home. Healing up back home. You'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. And the fear that has tied down your life, your chains are broken. And as you go and tell the story, and tell the news about Christ the Savior, about Christ the healer, about Christ the deliverer, about Christ the Redeemer, you'll say that and proclaim that confidently in Jesus' name. And the people you talk to, the Lord will penetrate their hearts of the word. And the word of God will have effect and impact in their lives in Jesus' name. I'll be an ambassador. Where are you? I'll be an ambassador. Where are you? You will be and the word will prosper in your mouth in Jesus' name. Raise up your hands. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because you have given us the name of Jesus. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every demon will flee away. Every disease will be healed. Oh Lord, we come against every demon, every legion, every disease, every oppression, every evil spirit. And we command, get out in Jesus' name. 
Lord, I pray that demon of bad habit, the demon of habitual sinning, the demon of drugs, and the demon of hurting themselves and killing themselves, slow, slow, gradual suicide. I command, come out of their lives in Jesus' name. And whatever evil power is operating in any life to do any evil thing, I take authority over that evil thing right now in Jesus' name. You're loosed. You're free. You're delivered. The Lord set everyone free in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have hatred against the word of God unconsciously, unintentionally, helplessly. They have brought themselves to think of swine, of material things more important than their soul, more important than their salvation, more important than their savior. And they do not know that they are on their way to perdition to hell. Oh Lord, deliver them from antagonism in Jesus' name. From the hatred that will destroy them. From the persecution that will destroy them. From their sending Christ away from their lives that will destroy them. Save them in Jesus' name new life for everyone peaceful life for everyone reasonable life for everyone righteous life for everyone instead of violence let there be peace instead of wickedness let there be calmness and i pray lord the evidence of real conversion you will exhibit and demonstrate in every life in jesus name reveal in everyone the very evidence of true conversion and give everyone the passion and the desire to carry out the task of the true convert in jesus name and as we all go at every opportunity talking to people around us about Christ the Savior, Christ the Healer, Christ the Redeemer, Christ the one who is all in all for us. We we'll pray, Lord, our message of redemption will be believable by the people we are talking to in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, many will come out of sin, come out of darkness, come out of their dungeon come out of captivity and they'll come to Christ the Lord as their savior in Jesus name as your people go back home go with them the joy of salvation go with them the joy of liberation go with them and the joy of being more than a conqueror go with them and the triumph of consecration go with everyone well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.